Well, hello again, friends. My name, of course, is not Ian Sands, and this, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. Last week I did a video, and inside that video I hit a keyboard shortcut that apparently freaked everybody out. Literally all of the comments were like, what did you do at this point in time? My mind is blown! So guess what we get to do today? The keyboard shortcut video. I'm gonna give you guys the six keyboard shortcuts you must utilize. You must. You have to utilize them. If you wanna get faster, you wanna increase your productivity and workflow, and generally just be a happier human being at the end of the day. In no particular order, We've got ripple delete, enable disable, nest, set to frame size versus scale to frame size. I'll explain the difference. Speed and paste attributes. These are the keys to victory. Open up Adobe Premiere. Keyboard shortcut video coming at you. All right, so I've got Premiere open and up here are different sequences labeled with the different keyboard shortcuts that we're gonna be talking about. Now, first things first, in order to access your keyboard shortcuts, if you're on Windows, come up to edit and go to keyboard shortcuts. I believe Mac is a bit different, but it is labeled keyboard shortcuts. And you open it up and it looks a little intimidating at first, but it's actually not. Basically, what you'll see up here, if you've never set any keyboard shortcuts, is all the Premiere Pro default keyboard shortcuts. And if you have set your own, it will be labeled there. So we're going to start off with Ripple Delete. So what I would recommend doing is coming down here to the search bar and type in Ripple Delete. And it will tell you exactly what yours is set to, if it is set. And if it isn't set, it will just be blank, just like that. So in order to set it, you just click right here and a little dialog box will pop up and you set it to whatever you want. Now I have a full size keyboard and I'm setting my small delete key to be ripple delete. You guys can send it to whatever you want, whatever works best for you. Once you do that, click okay. And we're gonna jump in starting with ripple delete. Now here I have a clip of me playing Overwatch. And basically what ripple delete does is it allows you to segment off different clips like this. I'm just gonna quickly edit like this. And then we'll get to my play of the game, which is down here where I get a 4K. Look at how beautiful this is. We'll, we'll just play the clip out. Why not? Look at this. Boom. Four. Four. That's amazing. So basically, let's go back to Ripple Delete. I want to delete all of these clips here. So I'm going to click and drag over the clip and I'm going to hit Ripple Delete. And then it will actually move my entire timeline backwards to the left so that the clips end up touching each other. If I don't do that and I just click regular delete, it leaves a giant gaping hole. And then a lot of people will actually like click and drag and then bring this over. And if you don't have snapping on, then it can be a huge pain in the... Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. Use ripple delete. It literally is one key and it saves you a lot of time and it prevents you from making mistakes where if you like, you don't click and drag over something, maybe you miss some audio, then everything gets out of sync and then you're just like frustrated. Use ripple delete, okay? So we'll go back, boom, ripple delete. Ripple delete. These two clips, screw it. Ripple delete. Ripple delete. All right, moving on to enable disable. Again, come up to edit keyboard shortcuts. If you want to set it yourself, type in enable. I have mine set to zero on the keyboard because that's what I used to use in Ableton Live when I was doing music stuff. Zero would be to mute clips and I just got really used to that. So mine's zero. You can set it to whatever you want. And this is the one that everyone was asking me questions about in the video. So say I have two video clips on top of each other and I want to switch back and forth between the clips. All I have to do is cut where I want the clip to be enabled or disabled and I just hit zero. And then it will go to the clip underneath it and then it will go back to the clip above it. And then you can do it again here. You can just enable, disable that. You can just do this. So then that way you don't have to delete things and it's not a pain in the ass to get back because all you have to do is just re-enable it if you ever want to go back to that clip. That is almost guaranteed my most used keyboard shortcut paired with ripple delete. I use those two literally every time I click the mouse, basically. I'm always shuffling things over and I'm always muting things and moving things around. Those are really, really important for you to get really fast and not waste a lot of time doing the same things over and over and over again. All right, moving on to set to frame size. Right now, my sequence is set to 4K, but the video that I dropped in is 1080. Now. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna scale this video up to match the frame size. Now, a lot of you probably go up to effect controls and you just grab scale, and then you have to screw with this or you manually type in 200 because you know that's, no! All right, set to frame size. Check this out. My set to frame size is one of my macro keys. All I have to do is hit that one key and boom. It automatically sets it to the frame size and it sets the scale to 200 automatically. I'll do it again, watch the scale, here we go. Bada bing, sets it to 200. Now. The difference between set to frame size and scale to frame size. So let's check this out. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna right click on this guy and I'm gonna hit scale to frame size. And you'll notice that the scale up here stays at 100, although it is scaled up to frame size. Now, what's the actual difference? Scale to frame size will actually scale up your clip. It will leave the physical scale at 100, but it will rasterize it at your timeline resolution. Now, what does that actually mean in layman's terms? I prefer not to use scale to frame size because if you ever push in on that footage, you're way more likely to pixelate than using set to frame size. Typically, the only time you'll want to use scale to frame size is if you're using graphics or lower thirds or anything that you know that the actual scale will never change. And then that way it rasterizes it at the timeline resolution and you don't ever have to worry about it. 
use set to frame size pretty much all the time, especially when you're doing 1080 to 4K or 4K to 1080, use set to frame size because then when you actually look at the scale properties, you'll know whether or not it was a scaled clip or not, whereas scale to frame size, it stays at 100, so you're actually not sure what was 1080, what was 4K, etc. I know that was probably confusing, but just use set to frame size, okay? Moving on, next. Here we got that same clip, and uh, say I want to uh, stabilize this clip, right? So I'm gonna set to frame size, there you go. Come over to my effects, type in warp stabilizer and just drag a warp stabilizer on it, and then I immediately get a notification. Requires clip dimensions to match source, fixed by nesting. So basically what nesting is, is a way for you to kind of trick Premiere into thinking that the clip that's in there is actually part of the timeline so you can use various effects and stuff like that. So my keyboard shortcut is shift N. You can make it whatever you want again, uh, and you can name it, click on it, whatever. And now if I try to drop a warp stabilizer on there, it will actually analyze the clip over here. It has a little running tally of how many frames are left in the warp and that's nesting. Speed. All right, check this out. Here's a clip of my buddy Jared riding his bike. Now I shot this at 120 frames a second. So you can see he's zooming pretty fast, uh, looking like a badass on his mountain bike, but this clip is way too fast. Since I shot it in 120 frames a second, I'm gonna click on my speed, which is M3 on my keyboard, the macro key, check this out, boom, one click, and it brings up the speed. I'm gonna change this to 20% speed because 120 FPS, you can actually go down to 20% without getting much distortion or pixelation. If you're shooting 60 FPS, you can go down to about 50%. And if you're shooting 2397 or 2997, uh, you really can't do anything. You can maybe go down to 90 and get away with it, but I don't recommend doing any speed. But since we shot at 120, I can put this at 20% and now look at this beautiful slow-mo he's not moving fast anymore and that clip turned into a 19 second clip where before it was only uh three and a half seconds barely so that's the speed key boom go down to 20 and there you go especially helpful if you're shooting in high frame rates and last but not least, we got paste attributes. Now, this one is one of my favorite ones, especially when you're doing any sort of effects or anything. So let's come up to effects and let's just uh, come down here to video effects and we're gonna put a mirror effect, right? Okay, cool. So the mirror effects on there, we'll mess with this here. So it looks like he's riding his bike into himself. Very cool. And now say I wanna copy that effect onto all of my other videos. Now, what you could do is you could right click, you can come up to copy, then you can come over here, you can click, no, stop doing that. Keyboard shortcuts, that's the whole point of this video. If you were actually considering it and you were like, yeah, that's what you do. You're not getting the point of the video, all right? Use keyboard shortcuts, check this out. I'm gonna click on my clip, I'm gonna hit Control C like I'm copying anything on any computer, and then I'm just gonna highlight the clips that I wanna paste it to. I'm gonna hit my paste attributes button and it'll tell you what you're gonna paste. The motion, the opacity, the time remapping, and the effects. Since I only really have effects on there, none of this stuff really matters. So I'm gonna click okay and then check it out. All of my clips are now mirrored and everything is good in the world. And I only had to use like two clicks. It also works on audio, my friends. Check this out. If I lower down this audio to like 12.23, I can just simply hit copy on the audio. Come over here, paste attributes. Now you see that these are checked for audio attributes. And I'm gonna click okay. And then it sets all the audio levels to that level. And I don't have to drag these down and don't have to worry about getting it exactly perfect with the decibel levels. <laughs> keyboard shortcuts. All right, now what did we learn today? I am listening. That's right, we learned that keyboard shortcuts are the shit. It will dramatically increase your workflow. It will dramatically increase your productivity and you won't waste time and you'll be happier at the end of the day because your life just got a whole lot easier. To recap, set your own keyboard shortcuts by coming up to edit, keyboard shortcuts, and then typing in all the things that we talked about in this video today. So it's ripple delete, enable, nest, set to frame size, speed, and paste attributes. Those are the six I promise you that will change your life if you use them on a daily basis. As always, thank you for watching this video. I truly hope that you learned something valuable from me today and you will go off on your journey of keyboard shortcut-ness. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. I'm here every week, guys. I try to upload every Sunday. You know, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Naughty and Sands. Hit me up, direct message, ask me to do a special video for you, and maybe I'll do it. That's what this video was. Hit that subscribe button, check out the last video, and I'll see you guys next time.